Thursday afternoon market recap. It has been a little bit of time since my last public YouTube update. In fact, the last one I brought you was over on this particular candlestick over here. This was Wednesday last week, so one week ago. And it was when we set up that of a hammer candlestick at support. Now, what makes that interesting or that video even more interesting is the simple fact that not only in that particular video, but videos going back, right, a further two months back to the month of March, we spoke about, right, the possibility of the market itself overshooting its support, right, creating a false trap door for the shorts, upon which there was a very high probability that we would begin the short squeeze. And inevitably, this may potentially be that moment right now, the continuation of the larger primary bullish market forces. All right, in a nutshell, that is essentially what we spoke about, dating back most recently to Wednesday last week. But as far back, I think even as far back as February, but most certainly in the month of March 2019. Well, here we are. What a difference one week can make. In fact, what a difference one week, or pardon me, Monday through Wednesday can make, half a week can make. If I go into the weekly time frame for you, you can see that the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 724 points. Now, I know, first of all, it's not the end of the week. We still have another two sessions worth of trade. But as it stands right now, we've essentially printed that false break to the downside, and we are seeing a very strong reaction off from this logical area of support at 25,000 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Essentially, what we have right on the print is at the close on Wednesday, if you are obeying or at least respecting and looking and watching at the weekly candlestick, is that of a tweezer bottom. All right, it's a multi week reversal, a bullish reversal, and a continuation pattern which does concede that prices, if they hold out through to the close on Friday, it does set up that of a continuation, right, into the future. Now, I wanted to point something out, all right, those who are not privy to Pivot Point Pro, this is for you. Over the weekend, okay, we went into some very important macro, sort of fundamental data, which is sort of underpinning that of the bullish trend, which is still assumed to be in effect. The reason why? Because it hasn't given us definitive signals that it has reversed. I will go out on a limb and say that the information housed within that weekly video, which is up on the website on Saturday, should very well give you peace of mind <clears throat> to jump on board with the continuation of this bull market further into 2019 and further potentially also into 2020. All right, I will say... If you have not looked into that Pivot Point Pro analysis class, now is the time to treat yourself to a pretty decent overview, if I may, if I may well say, say so, of the overall US market indices. Okay, it's a really good update as to where we find ourselves in the current business cycle, the economic cycle as well, and what it means for us, right, potentially over the next one to two months, but further out into 2019. I say that very much so sincerely. And I hope for those of you who've been watching me on this YouTube uh, sort of channel here, understand, of course, that sometimes it may seem to be that of a contrarian, all right, when, when a lot of market pundits are bearish, especially during the month of May, right, the sky is falling, this is the top, this is the beginning of the end, right, we haven't changed our perspective on the market one bit, all right, we've anticipated exactly more or less at this point what has happened. We've anticipated the false break to the downside. We have anticipated the very quick squeeze, right? The rally that we've seen, what is it? I think we're upwards of 5% this week already, All right? A tremendous reversal. And a lot of these shorts are going to begin, right? Selling to close. Whether or not we get a second leg down, we'll see. But as at the current juncture on Wednesday, all right, there's probably a lot of in the past anyway, overzealous uh, bears who are starting to worry. Starting to worry whether or not this market is going to continue to rise as it has done, not only right after the sell-off in 2018 or to end 2018 and to sort of begin 2019, but as it has done, even at the beginning of 2018 as we rose over the coming months, if you go back, this market has been in a continuous, right, bullish macro backdrop, right? Trend is assumed to be in effect. And ask yourself the question, have we broke any of these trend lines at the moment on any of these markets? And the answer to that question is no. Very simply, we haven't. That is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500. Have a look at this. 
overshot the support area. People again saying that this is going to be the beginning of the end, right? We've broken the support. This is the time to go short. What happened? They'll start to say technical analysis doesn't work, right? Incorrect. Unfortunately, it's the way that you're applying it, all right? And not giving it the leeway that it needs, or at least being a little bit creative in the application of the analysis. That's where you're becoming a little bit unstuck. Anyway, S&P 500 weekly chart up 74 points, negating essentially as at the close on Wednesday, the previous bearish week's candlestick, whereby it looked as if the bottom, the base was falling out of the market. Very quick turnaround in the space of, sh of three short days, 74 points to the upside on the S&P 500. The NASDAQ, even on Monday, whereby we saw the industrial average in the S&P 500 hold up a lot better than that of the NASDAQ, right? Due to, of course, tech being hammered um, with sort of government looking into antitrust violations potentially of Google and a few other uh, large players in, uh, you know, the, the, the tech and internet sort of landscape. Have a look at this. Tuesday and Wednesday, taking back off. We're closing at 7575.50. All right, we were down below 7350. And a very quick turnaround. We've got a one white soldier here, a continuation on Wednesday. Again, we spoke about this over the weekend, about the potential bounce that we may see in the markets, right? We were talking about placing the insurance policy to make sure that you're in the market in the event that this is it. That's the correction done and dusted. Pardon me. Otherwise, if we see that secondary roll, again, we tied it into the macro backdrop. I'm telling you, it is worth your while to take 90 minutes of your time and watch that analysis video. All right, I'll leave it at that. If you're looking for clarity in the markets, I would encourage you to take the time, sign up and have a look into that video. All right, you can email me anytime that you want. If you have any questions about any of the content I went through in that 90 minute session, which is up on the website, Apple, have a look at this. We're starting to bounce up at 184.61. Amazon, not so much at the moment holding support, or at least it hasn't come down to 1625 yet. We had a little bit of reversal on Tuesday, but as it stands, we didn't see a follow through into Wednesday session. We will bring that trigger down, just not at the moment. Look at this, Boeing Airlines, all of these shorts. Remember the dashed line that we spoke about? Even the dashed line over here. Not to trade counter trend. Remember, the trend is assumed to be in effect. The trend is your friend. All of these golden rules, here it is playing out. High wave spinning top up $4.13. These are reversal candlesticks to the upside. So a lot of people have seen this pattern. They've recognized it for it, for it being sort of somewhat of a descending triangle. But to me, it looks as though, again, we're just sort of pricing in a base upon which we're going to push off from in the future. Baidu not really helping us out at the moment. It's treading water. Caterpillar seems to be somewhat basing as well. Volume isn't all that good over the past three sessions. However, we are certainly seeing a little bit of a bounce. And again, this is coming from exceptionally oversold conditions. COP is coming down to that 55 area. Remember, we spoke about this. Pay attention to this trend line. This is the sweet spot for COP down here. All right, it's very similar to, all right, this candlestick is, is downright ugly. I get it. However, overlap it with the US dollar index. You've got that rising trend line. You get these ugly candlesticks into the rising areas of support, whereby we're essentially setting up a series of higher lows. What do you see? You see a hammer candlestick as at today's session around 97.30. It sets the tune for, again, potentially the continuation even though we do technically have that of a double and a triple top there on the US dollar index. CVX, you can see again, it is bouncing off from this logical area of support. Disney, what is it doing? It's firming up. Where is it firming off? Firming up off from? Off from these rising exponential moving averages. Google, got the gap down. Are we seeing follow through? Not really. This was largely why the NASDAQ was down so much on Monday. However, we've stabilized around that 1,050 handle on Google as well. No trade there at the moment. IBM, not to confuse anyone, this is a long trade. We refuse to go short as we have done with a bunch of other stocks. And in fact, we've been talking about bringing down those long entries over time. 132.40 was the entry. We tagged it yesterday as at the close on Tuesday. Pulled back a little bit today, but it seems as though certainly we may have a little bit of a reversal gap here. The difference between Monday and also Tuesday session and 
Netflix is coming all the way back on up to where we were essentially a number of weeks ago, whereby we're holding water very similar, or treading water, which is marking time very similar to what we're seeing when we look at the chart of Disney, right? Where we're simply moving sideways. Netflix essentially isn't as strong as Disney. However, we're just priming for that breakout when these markets do definitively turn. I just wanted to throw in as well. If you're looking at intermediate corrections on the markets, right, and you're looking at the weekly MACD, or you're looking at the sort of the weekly Stokes or even the RSI, you want to see one, the RSI push into oversold, which it very clearly hasn't done. We're at the neutral point at the moment. And the Stokes, whenever you see the slow line cross the 50, generally speaking, you may be towards the end of the intermediate correction. What I'm trying to say is that there is still, right, petrol in the tank for these markets to move lower. And the way you need to look at these markets still is that upon this correction, if this correction continues to play out, it is going to remain that of a buying opportunity. I am not deviating right from that. I'm not diverging from that point of view right whatsoever. And I mean that sincerely. There will be a time to become concerned about the state of the US financial markets. There will be a time where we will sit down very candidly and very honestly and say, look, there is a very high probability that this is the top of the equity market. There is a very high probability that we have just peaked. There is a very high probability that we are entering into some form of a haircut whereby we may see a 40 to 60% write-off in equity prices. Now is not the time. It's simply not the case. Now is not the time. When you think about it, the genius of this entire plan Really, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of emails, people talking and referencing about Trump and, of course, the escalation in the trade war with Mexico. I mean, imagine if it's just a way for, for Trump essentially to corner the Fed into lowering rates to offset, of course, right, um, some of the ne negative economic consequences from this trade war or from actually placing tariffs, right, and a little bit of a reduction in trade. What is the Fed going to naturally do? Probably drop interest rates. So, I mean, Fed, I mean, sorry, not Fed, Trump has come out on a number of occasions and, and, and spoken about other central banks doing certain things. And he is, of course, a low interest rate kind of person with the amount of debt that he has, obviously, in his, in his private businesses as well. He's made, he hasn't shied away from the fact whatsoever that he wants interest rates to be lower. Possibly the escalation in trade wars, that of course has come directly from him and his administration, may be a way of actually pressuring the Fed to do what he wants them to do without him formally telling them to do it, even though he has technically done that as well. Maybe he is just doing this, right, to get what he wants with monetary policy, all right? And that may be the genius behind all of this. What happens? Fed caves, cuts interest rates, equity markets go stupid, even more stupid than what they currently are, and we are in a bubble. What happens? Trump just signs a deal with China and Mexico, done, right? More fuel to this bin fire, okay? There is a plan about this. Trump references the stock market a fair bit. I think we can all agree on that, all right? The consensus is he likes to reference what the stock market is doing because he believes it is a reflection of the strength of the underlying economy, which is not necessarily true. People just seem to connect or at least make the connection that equity or at least economic strength is tied to what equity prices are doing, which is not 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 theoretically true whatsoever however there may be a plan behind all of this or at least it makes sense to me that that's what's going on behind the sort of curtains at the moment and i think the shorts out there the bears you're gonna have to take a look all right you're gonna have to essentially have a moment and uh, don't make it an ego thing but you don't want to be on the other side of this train if that is to happen or if that were to happen, okay? I think we may be very early in that process right now. And I'm telling you, don't fight it. If you disagree with it, that's fine. I partly disagree with it. But boy, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, wise enough to take the right side of the trade, okay? And I'm begging you, do the same thing. Just swallow a little bit of, of your ego or pride, whatever it is. And just trade in the direction of the trend, Okay? If you go into the daily oscillators, look at them. They're firming up. But what will happen is that we're not going to see that definitive turn up in equity prices, the more legitimate move, until these weeklies confirm that of the daily price action. Okay, so let's go into us as at this Wednesday afternoon, right, market recap. It's been a little bit longer, but I'm stressing the importance. Have a look into that pro analysis class. I mean that sincerely. I really, really do. If you want that fundamental data, the snapshot of where we are in the business cycle, 
and what it means for equity prices. All right. Until then, everybody, enjoy your Wednesday evening. I'll be back with you later in the week. All the best. Farewell. Thank you.